causal path analysis is a form of correlation and regression analysis. And to use it, you really need to work with continuous variables. So if you were wanting to study social mobility this way, you might, for example, take a scale of occupational prestige or status and consider um, individuals' own positions on this scale, uh, their destination positions, and then their father's or their parental position on this scale. That would be the origins. Mm -hmm. And then you would measure social mobility or immobility simply by the correlation mm -hmm. between the, the score, uh, uh, the father on the occupational status scale and the score of the child on the occupational status scale. That would probably work out at something like 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Okay. So then you might want to ask further, well, what about variables that mediate between origin and destination in terms of occupational status? And an obvious candidate here would be education. So you want to measure that in a continuous way, say years of completed education. Then what causal path analysis would allow you to do would be to decompose this overall correlation of let's say about 0.3 or 0.4 into two parts. One part that went via education mm -hmm. uh, from origin to education and then from education to destination and the other part that didn't go through education if you like the direct effect. Mm -hmm. And then of course you could elaborate on this. You could bring in uh, a fourth and fifth variable, you might want to bring in uh, IQ as measured in early life. You might want to bring in occupational status of the first occupation that the individuals had on entering the labour market. And path analysis will then allow you a still finer decomposition of this overall association through all the paths that you might draw between these, uh, the, these variables. So from that point of view, it, it can be quite revealing. Mm -hmm. However, it's got at least two big problems. One is it's a form of standardized regression. So really, you can't separate out the effects of the marginal distributions of all these variables from the effects of their net correlation. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you can't take account, for example, of the fact that between the parent's generation and the child's generation, the shape of the occupational structure may have changed, or the distribution of education may have changed. And that becomes especially problematic when you may want to be comparing uh, samples over long periods of time or across countries. Second problem is that a totally linear system and you have to assume that the results you come up with just apply equally across the whole of the population that you're looking at that for example you've got to assume that the role of education in social mobility is the same wherever you start off and wherever you end up and in fact we know that's not true that for example, if you're the son of a small proprietor, a lot of sons of small proprietors end up simply inheriting the family business. And education is of pretty negligible importance. On the other hand, if you're the son of a manual wage worker and you end up as a salaried professional, you can be pretty sure education was crucial. So it assumes path analysis, the same regression rules apply across the board. We know it's, that's not true. Okay, log linear modeling, um, again, think of it in terms of mobility analysis. Here you're basically working uh, with categorical variables, and you don't even have to assume that they're ordered, they're just different. So you could think in this case, say, of social mobility in terms of some kind of class schema. Uh, you might think of the 
classes has been ordered but for the purposes of analysis that doesn't matter. So you have an ability table which simply classifies individuals by their own class position as against their parents class position and what log linear modeling then will enable you to do is to look at the association between origins and destinations defined in this way uh, using what we call odds ratios and in this case you can very clearly separate out the effects for changes in the marginal distributions from any changes in the underlying association net of the marginal distributions and moreover you can do this almost on a cell by cell basis so you don't have to assume that the same patterns of association operate uh, across the board it's a much more disaggregated kind of, uh, uh, of analysis um, so you can say yes um, uh, small proprietors self-employed workers have a much higher rate of uh, much higher propensity for immobility than do say um, uh, clerical workers things of this kind uh, so it's very valuable when you want to look at changes in mobility over time or across societies because you can make them this crucial distinction between absolute mobility rates which uh, reflect the effects of changes in the marginal distributions from relative mobility rates which just focus on the net associations. However, then there is a downside and that is that it's much more difficult taking this approach to bring in intervening mediating variables like education and to distinguish the indirect and direct effects and this is one of the big statistical issues at the moment how can you do the equivalent of uh, causal path analysis in this context of uh, discrete uh, variables and nonlinear models.